Hello again RV TV viewers, Ron Stafford from RV Warehouse and Great Annexes and this is the channel that brings you everything caravans and campers. So if you're new here, subscribe in, keep up to date with all these great information and tips that we bring you. Get involved with us and comment underneath if you've got particular questions or input around any of the videos that we, we produce. Today we're going to show you the awning and annex option that we can supply for camper trailer owners. And we know that with camper trailers, you know, there's a multiple number of choices when it comes to uh, what you do with your awning and annex. Some good, some not so good. So we're gonna show you the good today. We're gonna actually show you the great today. Uh, and uh, and this will give you an insight into what you can do uh, to get the best uh, result for you and your annex requirements on your wind up camper. So. This camper here has been fitted with the Upgrade Fiamma wind-out awning. Now, many of you may be aware of the wind-out awnings, Fiamma being the most popular, uh, because obviously a dealership will generally sell you either a plain camper trailer with no awning at all, or they'll put a bag awning that you then have a couple of people to roll up and, uh, and, and set up with all the poles and pegs. Whilst those awnings are very structurally tight when they're set up. They're a little bit cumbersome to put up and down every time. But the most popular upgrade to the camper is the Fiamma system. So we want to show you that today, uh, give you an idea of how they work and what, what they do. So let's dive straight in to the Fiamma F45 upgrade to a wind up camper. So when it comes to wind out awnings, Fiammas are obviously very popular and for good reason. They get away from the soft bag solution, which obviously would mount there uh, most of the time. And it gives you then a hard aluminium case box awning that's mounting up there nice and neat, fits in quite well with the dimensions uh, and the look of it is also very nice, very sleek. Um, so what's involved generally with doing this is this three mounting plates that got to be mounted onto your camper, bolted on or, or, and urethaned on. Uh, and then we sit the container up into it and it's important to seal behind so you don't get water between the roof and the back of the container, which would then act like a little rainfall for you here, a little waterfall for you. So installing them is really quite simple. You can do it yourself if you're handy with a battery drill and a silicon gun. Uh, though obviously expert workshops like ours can get it all done for you as well. So if you're interested in that, get in touch with the team and we can give you a quote. But my goal now is just to demonstrate how to use it and how easy it is and, and, and obviously taking you away from the bag awning setup to the, uh, to the box awning setup. So the container is supplied. They're supplied in every half metre uh, with the exception of the 2.6. The 2.6 metre is the smallest that's available in the Australian market. It goes to a 3 metre and then from 3 metre, 3.5, 4 four and a half, five. Now on the campus, you'll never get up to four and a half or five. Maximum is generally four meters on the larger campers. So the best way to work out what size you need is where your razor bars for your camper are. Measure between those two razor bars and you want to go to your closest size, uh, you know, two to three, three and a half, four, whichever that one that would be. But if you're considering putting annex walls on, if you're 3.2 metres to that, the 3 metres is going to sit inside. It's not going to help us with the annex, it's going to put the annex wall outside. So go to your 3.5 metre long, so we can come back into the annex walls to get a, just to ensure we get a nice seal against weather and rain up there. But nonetheless, the Fiamas come with their own winder handle in the, uh, in the kit, and this one in particular happens to be an extended one, so we can really extend that out to a nice height to suit the height in which it's actually mounted. So it's really quite simple. We're just gonna stick our hook straight onto the winding mechanism here. And we just simply wind out. And as you'll notice, as we're winding out, we have two bifold arms here that are actually bringing the unit out, okay? And this is the main strength of the awning. Now, as we come out, we're then starting to just hang the awning in midair. And this then puts all the pressure back through the awning cassette, which you've got to be careful of. So we never want to roll, wind this thing out the whole way and have it kind of unsupported at all. So what I like to do, 
is just simply bring it out that first little bit that then allows you to get hold of the onboard legs that simply fold down and then get to the ground. And as soon as that touches the ground, now the pressure is supported. We're not gonna put any undue strain through the, through the uh, box. So we're gonna get those out now, straight down to the ground. Okay, now we're supported. So we'll just continue our journey with winding it out and just winding, uh, bringing the legs forward, w walking them out. Obviously, if we go too far, they'll just slip out on you. If someone's there to help you, they can be doing this while you're winding. And what we're going to do is to take it all the way out. Now, with the awnings, the 2.6 metre will only extend two metres in projection from the, ca from the camper, whereas from three metres on, it goes a two and a half metre extension. In actual fact, the two and a half metre extension from the three metre plus is wider than most rollout awnings go. So it's a really big benefit when you're talking about how far can we project. We're maximising the space on the slab because most slabs are about 2.4, 2.5 wide. And that really helps you guys get maximum coverage over the edge of the slab. Okay, so we're just going to continue to wind out. And what will happen is, if you come underneath and have a look here, uh, viewers, is we get to a point where the arms will no longer travel and if we continue to wind, it sends the roof slack. So this is an indicator of, okay, now the frame has gone as far out as it can. We now just have to back wind the roof until it's tense, but not as far where it would then collapse the awning arms to continue its process in. So we wanna go out, let it go limp, and just back wind till the roof is then firm. And that's the awning wound out. Now, like any awning, it's susceptible to wind and lift. Okay, so at the moment we've got no anchors and obviously being in a shed with a concrete floor, I cannot peg this to the ground. If you're in a caravan park and you're on grass, the first thing you would do then is get a peg through the foot so it anchors it and stops it from lifting. However, if you're in a position where you can't peg to the ground, the awning comes with a set of mounting clips. This basically allows you to bring the leg of the awning back into the wall of the camper and support it on the wall. and clicks onto the side of the van to now give you an anchor. So now if we get wind load, it's now anchored against the, against the camper and we won't then see it lift up and over the top. And obviously if it goes up over the top, good chance that your awning's gonna be broke and you'll be ringing us for a new one. So the, kit themselves, the kits themselves come with those brackets involved and gives you the ability to anchor it back. But of course, going back to the camper makes that leg longer to reach into the wall, which gives us less overlap, which can then make it a little bit more flimsy. So where possible, always try to keep it on the ground because when it's on the ground and pegged off, we've got maximum overlap in there, which makes that leg a little bit more rigid. What we want to down do is just ensure that you've got clearance on your door and bring the height of your awning down to just above your head. And we want to maximise the fall on the roof. By maximising the fall on the roof, we, sh we just make sure water can get away. Now, with the Fiamma, they have a rain lip here. So as water comes down, it's actually falling in behind this lip. So it doesn't fall off the front. That's good and bad for the fact that you won't get a cascading uh, waterfall in front of you, but it can catch water, which gives you the risk of belly. So in rain, it's always important just to drop one leg down, whichever end that might be. And my suggestion is when you see the level of the ground and work out which way it's falling away from you, obviously favor the drainage to suit that so it just continues away. But nonetheless, the point being is you have to drop the leg down so the water comes down and naturally will run off and not get caught up 
in, in the awning itself. Time to leave camp. We're going to move on. It's time to sit, put the uh, Fiamma awning back away. So very simply, it's just really reverse to what we did before. We'll bring that back up to height. These legs are going to support it as we come back in. And we're just back to the winder handle. And we're just now winding the opposite way, which obviously allows this awning to remove, bring itself back in. We're just going to walk our legs in to help that process. It's all nice and easy. It's not very heavy on the crank. It's very easy to manage. As it starts to get closer, it'll start to take itself off the ground, as you can see. But don't go too high where you can't then replace the legs back in. So now I'm going to close the legs up to their shortest and nip that nut back off so you don't lose it during travel. We're going to close the foot down, rest it up onto that leading bar, and it just sits itself home. Very easy. Oh, shortest length. Bring him up onto the leading bar and we just push it home. Nice. There's a couple of plastic clips in there that then grab that leg and hold it in while you travel. Okay, so legs are away. We just continue our wind back in. All the way home until we see our little red locking tabs on the end retreat back into the box. We're coming back. The locks have now retreated, meaning they've locked the bar in. Remove your handle and you're away. It's as simple as that. One of the most easiest awnings to operate. One person does it very easily uh, and therefore set up and set down is a breeze. Okay, So this is a real con serious consideration on your upgrade when it comes to, to your camper. Uh, so if you want to get away from the, the bag awning or the pull through roof options and you want to get something a little bit easier, then consider the F45 uh, as, as your upgrade. Um, I'm sure you'll be happy and uh, you know, it'll be a lot easier for you when you're at camp to set up. If you need to know more information, please send us an email or even get to our website and there's plenty there. We can give you quotes and we can match any price that you find online if you want to deal with a reputable supplier that's going to back you up afterwards. That's what we do. So that's the Fiamma F45. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on all the content that we bring. We've already got a ton of content for you to look at, so go back through and check all that out. Um, but if you've enjoyed this, please really help us. If you could hit a like and share it to your friends. Uh, get to rbwarehouse.com.au. Check out all the extra details around products. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.